this is covering the spread. Here are your hosts, Jim Sawness and Dr. Ed Feng. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com, where today we are previewing week 14 in the NFL and a couple of big matchups in the AFC by talking to Olivia Moody of the Book It app, getting her thoughts on this week's game and a couple of NFC futures. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here as always by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work over at ThePowerRank.com. Ed, uh, unlike Greg Williams, you are still here and uh, looking to talk yeah. about week 14. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm glad Adam Kaplan did not fire me over this, <laughs> this past week. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Jets had it. They had they had that game won multiple times. Yeah. I feel like, you know, when they stopped the Raiders, like it was like, all right, this is done. And I'm not in the situation where I watch full games anymore just because, uh, you know, it just just caught it on red zone. And then all of yeah. a sudden you flip back to red zones like, oh. This is a game. Yeah. And then then we saw what everyone saw. Um, you know, I personally like the idea of getting a little pressure on the quarterback on that play. Maybe not cover zero, no. but <laughs> I, I like I like mixing it up a little bit. You know, maybe have one deep safety rush four, maybe even five or something like that. Sure. Didn't work out. Like um, rushing three is probably not the way to go. Because then you well, can like that's you can most, let but that's you can let the, the quarterback yeah. wind up and stuff like that. And they did get pressure on Derek Carr, you know, yeah. to their credit. Yeah. But when it's – I think that it's, it's a different situation when it's Henry Ruggs because, like, you know he can burn people. Like, he doesn't get – you know, the, the target share is never high with Henry Ruggs, but, like, right. if he's got to burn a dude one-on-one -on -one with no over-the-top help, he can do it. So – like, it was interesting. I think that it was fun to hear people, like, with the conspiracy theories about the Jets throwing the game. Right. Like, that's that's a fun theory and all until you realize it's Greg Williams. Because Greg Williams is, like, <laughs> the craziest MF on the planet. And, like, if anyone is actually going to do this, and I don't say that in a complimentary fashion, by the way. Like, it's <laughs> it's right. not meant to be a compliment. Like, if anyone's going to do that in, in a serious sense and not in a sense of tanking for Trevor Lawrence, it's him. And... Uh, that's why that's where the conspiracy theory stopped for me is oh it was greg williams i feel like it, the argument stops right. there is he gonna get another job as a dc i mean he, he's probably got 17 offers already if you listen to him he, he had that press conference uh i think it was when he took the the jets job he's like i had seven head coaching offers don't even have to interview just sign they had they were waiting to sign me but i wanted to come here and yeah, so obviously ed he's had 17 offers already just hasn't found the right one yet so right. obviously, Cause there's, obviously, because there's 17 that. openings. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it's Greg Williams. You drop everything you got to get Greg Williams on your team. That's just how things work. Ed. This is the That's NFL. Right. Get, right. get learned. As they would say, we're going to talk to Olivia Moody here in just a bit to preview week 14 on the NFL. You can find her on, tw find her on Twitter at live moods, L I V M O O D S. You can find her on the book it app. We're going to talk to her about what book it is and get her thoughts on week 14. If you're looking for some college football thoughts, we had Edward Egros on yesterday to talk college football week 15, got his thoughts on some big pack 12 games to find that episode with Edward. Just go to covering the spread, wherever you get your podcast. We are on Apple podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, the Google Play Store, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, etc., etc. You can find us there. And if you like what you hear from Edward, Olivia, or either of us, make sure you leave a rating and review as well. Now, Ed, you mentioned that you didn't get fired this past week. I probably should have, based on one of the bets I recommended for week 13. Wow. Before we get to Olivia, we got to talk about that and uh, recap what went down last week. Covering the past. So last week here on Covering the Spread, we had Fabian Sommer on to preview week 13. You can follow or find Fabian on Twitter at S-U-U-M-A-8-10. Fabian wanted the over on Browns Titans at 53 and a half. It did close at 54, Ooh. and they actually went over that total pretty early in the third quarter. Yeah. It finished at 76 total points. So an easy win there for Fabian. And Ed, I had a lot of DFS teams around that, that uh, game. It did not save nice. me. I still had a terrible week, but uh, it, it was nice from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone thought they'd have 30, <laughs> Cleveland would have 38 points at half, right? Yeah, obviously. But yeah, so your boy actually, Donovan Peoples Jones contributing to the the over there. Yeah, exactly. He was wide open on that one. Oh, yeah, he, he burned them. And uh, broken plays aren't sustainable. That's why you look yep. at stuff like success rate, that is more predictable and stuff like that. 
But watching Donovan Peoples-Jones streak down the sideline is still fun, regardless, even if it's not sustainable or predictive. Fabian, was leaning Buffalo minus three against the 49ers? That line moved a lot before kickoff. Uh, It was all over the place. It settled at San Francisco minus one and a half. Uh, But Fabian was right regardless because the Bills won that game by 10 points to get him the cover there. Both Fabi and I had action on the Rams-Cardinals game. This one was not my bad bet of the week. Uh, he won in the Cardinals plus three. I had the over at 48 and a half, and it closed at Rams minus two and a half with the total at 49. One play here helped me and hurt Fabian a lot. That was actually a pick six by Kyler Murray. Pick six is awesome for totals. Not so awesome for covers. Uh, so the over did hit here. It finished at 66 points, but the Rams won by 10. So still a 2 one week for Fabian there. Uh, and I needed that over because my other game was pretty bad. I wanted the over on the Chargers team total at 24 points. My rationale was I don't want to touch the money line. I don't want to touch the spread because I don't trust the Chargers coaching staff. Probably should have listened to that line of analysis as opposed to the analysis about the Chargers offense being good and the the Patriots defense being bad because the Chargers got shut out. There was line movement towards the Chargers late in the week, but I at least got in before that happened. Still absolutely brutal, Ed, and I don't think there's anything redeeming about this one, honestly. Well, I mean, the Chargers had 258 yards. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to score zero points when they had 258 yards. Like, is there an expected point total that you get out of 258 yards? Because I'm guessing it's not even close to 24. Like, we're talking like 17-ish probably expected points Yeah, 13. 13 when I look at it. I got a little model with yards per pass attempt and total yards. So, 13. You got more than halfway there. Yeah, more than halfway there. Uh, So, I can take like 50% of an expected point, you know? Sure. Let's go go with that. You know, why not? 0.53 expected wins. There you go. So, it's not the worst bet ever. But it's pretty darn close. Like, people will tweet at me when I make bad recommendations, whether it be on this show or on DFS. And, like, usually it annoys me because I, like, you know, whatever. I, it's, it's annoying to, like, put our picks out there and get roasted. I could not get mad at anyone who came back at me on Twitter this past week. <laughs> like, if you, if you tweeted at me about this game, well, yeah, it's deserved. So that's on me. <laughs> Kudos to you. You're right. I'm wrong. I can't I can't clap back at it. So uh, feel free to roast me at your earliest convenience. Yours was much better uh, because uh, you were looking for the best line you could get on the Washington against Pittsburgh game and the under on that game. It actually closed at Pittsburgh minus six. I think it was eight and a half when we talked. Uh, the total yeah. was 44 points at close. I think the lowest it got was probably around 40 three or so i think you said you got well, it at 43 and a half yeah i ended up getting it at 43 and a half so i think i did that friday morning fanduel yeah. had it at 40 it was 42 and a half actually when we talked i forgot yeah when we talked i thought you said you said you you were like john sheeran you snake like <laughs> yeah <laughs> you were cursing john sheeran off air of course but yes. uh <laughs> well whatever hey the man's doing his job it's really i know he's doing his job too well that's the issue right well, whatever. I, I went. I, I went elsewhere. I got under forty-three and a half. <laughs> so. But it didn't matter because you won either way. Uh, because even if you bet that game at close, you still would have gotten the win here because Washington rallied late to get the win outright. The game finished with just forty points. So being low on Pittsburgh was beneficial for you here. In case people didn't see it, whether it be on covering the spread last week or on your Twitter video that you had, uh, you know, outlining this, what was your rationale for being low on Pittsburgh going into that game? Yeah, I mean, just the offense, right? I mean, they they look good in terms of points scored per game, but there's uh, three defensive scores in there. There's a lot of takeaways that have probably resulted in some pretty good field position. But 22nd in terms of my adjusted success rate, that's what I know is going to be uh, important going forward. You know, you could definitely see Pittsburgh winning that game with a with a critical turnover, or maybe even a pick six or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. They didn't end up getting that against Washington. And, um, you know, I mean, I didn't expect them to lose, but but it's, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they're, they, they weren't going to live up to an 11-0 record. Right. And I think that, if we can bet against records at a certain point, especially this time of the year where people records are more well-known and stuff like that, it makes a lot of sense. That was beneficial there. As we discussed yesterday, I think that there is actually a buy low spot on the the Steelers now based on the way the markets have swung against them. We'll talk more about that with Olivia in just one second. But first, every football fan dreams of meeting the greatest NFL players of all time. And starting this week, 
FanDuel and Goat Fuel have teamed up to make dreams a reality. In FanDuel's Goat Gauntlet series, powered by Goat Fuel, fans will put their fantasy knowledge to the test by competing for a chance to take on the NFL's greatest of all time. Here's how it works. Over the course of the next three weeks, there will be three qualifier contests highlighting a specific position, wide receiver, running back, or quarterback, and an NFL GOAT. Those who win the qualifier contest or roster the highest scoring player for that week's highlighted position will be automatically entered into the finals where they'll have a chance to play against three NFL GOATs, Jerry Rice, Emmett Smith, and Warren Moon, and compete for their share of $10,000 in cash prizes, goat field products, and an exclusive virtual meet and greet with the NFL Hall of Famers. For more details, visit FanDuel.com slash GoatFuel, G-O-A-T-F-U-E-L, GoatFuel, or download the FanDuel app today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Let's get set for week 14 now with Olivia Moody. You can find her on Twitter at LiveMoods and check her out on the Book It app. She is the director of media for Book It and an in-app host for them as well. We're going to break down week 14 and get her thoughts on a couple of NFC futures as well. Covering the present. Let's bring Olivia Moody into covering the spread to preview week 14 in the NFL. Olivia, welcome to covering the spread. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk with you and thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you on here and, and talk some NFL. But before we do that, you are with a new app called Book It. And I... I've read a little bit about it, but I don't know a whole lot about the concept. Uh, so what exactly is Book It and what are you doing over there on your end? Yeah, so on Book It right now, it's pretty much just a social media platform for betting. Um, the idea came to the, my CEO because he's like, you know what? Everyone follows a million different betting accounts on their Twitter and on their Instagram, but it kind of gets lost in the other posts from their friends and their family. And this is an app where it's just sports betting. Um, and so you can there's a there's a news feed that you can kind of tweet essentially, not really tweet, but post your picks. Um, you can post the lines, you can, um, you know, post your track, your bets. So you can't actually place a bet on our app, which is why I typically head over to FanDuel to place all my bets. Um, oh, but you wow, can't nice. track. Yeah. You can't <laughs> track all of your bets though, which I have learned, um, since I just got into this a little bit ago that like tracking your bets is huge. And that's kind of how you figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so it's a great way to track your action as well as interact with other sports bettors. Um, at some point, hopefully very soon, we will have um, cappers on there that have picks for people um, and just advice in general. Because I think in the sports betting industry, um, it can be a little intimidating and a lot of people don't realize how much fun it is because they're too caught up in the plus minus money line, all these things that just intimidate them. But really, um, sports betting is for everyone and any everyone loses. So that shouldn't scare you away <laughs> from it. Even the best cappers in the world, no matter what their Instagram bio says, they lose. Um, so yeah, it's just a place to kind of interact with other betters, which is super fun. Yeah, Excellent. So how, how did you, how did you end up getting involved with Book It? So Trent and I both went to TCU. I graduated from TCU this past May. I wouldn't really call it graduating because of <laughs> right. it kind of ruined everything, but they I went you a piece there. Of paper. Yeah, right. Um, I went there and I was a journalism major, uh, but I got into, I was asked to be the sports host my senior year. Um, and Trent was a sports broadcasting major, so he saw all my things. Um, he actually wanted the job that I got. Oops. But at least it gave me <laughs> the opportunity to be seen by him. And I graduated during a pandemic when sports weren't existing. He brought this idea to me and I was like, I think this is what I'm supposed to do right now. This is great. And it's entered me into this community of people that is just awesome. I, I really didn't understand the magnitude of sports betting and how popular and how, you know, it's, it's rising. It's an industry that's just getting started, which is super exciting. So I didn't realize how much fun I would have with it. And I, I love it. Well, it's tough to learn so much on the fly. So what have you been doing to try to like acclimate yourself to the world of sports betting? You know, the, what, what have you been studying in order to get yourself caught up to speed on all this? Yeah. Um, I think first thing that's the most important is set aside your ego and learn from other people. Um, and that's what I did. I latched onto people like Ariel Epstein and Megan and I watched their things and I realized, okay, here are two women um, that know a lot about this. Like I can do it too. And all sometimes that's all you need is just to see that somebody else like you is doing it. And then you're like, okay, I've got this. Um, I think learning. Um, and again, from, from learning, uh, 
I don't learn unless I lose. Yeah. So I know that sounds really horrible. So I bet really small amounts because I'm not rich, okay? So I can't afford to be losing a lot. So I bet really small amounts, but losing is where I learn the most. Um, I figure out what works and what doesn't. I'm slowly, finally starting to figure out what works the best for me. Some people shop the line. Some people like look at stats for the teams. Um, and I'm figuring out my mojo, my betting mojo. So I'm finally getting on the right track, but it really just took um, asking questions feeling a little bit dumb sometimes to ask <laughs> questions and just let your guard down and say, Hey, I don't know what this means. Please explain it. So. Yeah. We've learned plenty from Megan over the, the past, the past year or so too. So we can definitely relate to that uh, as well. Now you do other sports in addition to NFL as well, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, um, I mean, my job is a little bit weird right now because I do, um, sports betting with book it. And I also just talk sports in general. That's what I yeah. did my senior year as a host. I would do sports um, reports every single week. So I find myself like going in that direction and I'm like, well, I'm embedding. Like sometimes people don't care about those, those pieces of information. So I really talk all sports. Uh, primarily I love basketball. I always have, I always will um, love basketball. Believe it or not, I just started liking MLB this year. I hated okay. baseball before, um, but I was pretty good at betting it. And maybe it's because I didn't use my heart at all because I didn't enjoy the sport. So I was just looking at the numbers. I was just looking at the facts. I didn't have a relationship with any of the teams or the players. And I was pretty successful in MLB. So I grew to love that. Um, next on my list is hockey. I need to get a little bit of hockey in my system. But other than that, I like pretty much all sports at this point. Excellent. So let's talk some NFL. Uh, playoffs are getting here pretty quick, and uh, let's stick to the the worst division in football, the <laughs> NFC East. Uh, so it looks like Washington and the New York Giants are kind of getting near the top, uh, but it's kind of all over the place. Giants look like the favorite at minus 145. Washington's at plus 160. Uh, do you like anything in, in this futures market? I do. I like Washington plus 160, to be completely honest with you. I really like that. Um, both Washington and the Giants have two games over the Eagles and the Cowboys. I have given up on the Cowboys. I'm done. Goodbye. I can't deal with them anymore. I, every time I bet on them, they let me down. I'm done with them. So are you um, a Cowboys fan? Because you went to TCU. So are you a Cowboys fan then or no? Um Let's just put it this way. Cowboy fans ruined it for me. I could okay, have been okay. a Cowboys fan. <laughs> but the chirping, the noise, the over the top, it just yeah, yeah. it turned me away. So, no, I am not. Um, okay, so bullet dodge there. So we're all good. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes. So based on the strength of the remaining schedule, I really like Washington plus 160. Um, we basically need the Giants to lose um, and the Washington to win more than – you know, they lose at this point. So um, after watching the Browns uh, dominate the Titans, I think the Browns should win against the Giants. So I don't think the Giants will win that game. Um, I don't see the, the Giants beating Ravens defense either with Le Lamar Jackson being back. I just don't see it. And I do think the Cowboys game is a little bit of a toss up, but I think the Giants will either go one and three or zero oh and four. And I think Washington will do pretty well. I actually like Washington this weekend, but we'll get back to that in a second. Um, so, yeah, I think Washington plus 160 is great because I don't see the Giants winning um, very many of their remaining games. I say they go one one and three or zero oh and four is my guess. So and we'll see. Washington's yeah. playing good football and that defense is solid, too. Well, yeah. and the markets seem to be agreeing with you as well because we saw that line, Pittsburgh being favored by nine, get all the way down to six. Uh, so that's strong evidence in, in support of that as well. Let's talk here about the NFC Championship odds because those are pretty wide open too. There doesn't seem to be a real standout team right now. Nobody shorter than the Saints at plus 220. But then there are five teams at plus 650 or shorter. So there's a lot up in the air for the NFC Championship odds. Olivia, anything you like here from an NFC Championship perspective, or is it a market you're staying away from? You know what? I am staying away from it. I think every team at this point has shown weaknesses yeah. um, in some way, shape, or form. So I think I need to see the remainder of this schedule, um, see the rest of these these games play out before I make any decisions. Because every team um, has shown weakness at this point, and I just don't know where I would go. So it's better for me to just sit out. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about some games. So Minnesota, yeah. go, Minnesota goes to Tampa Bay, uh, two teams that have, I think, been kind of up and down all year. Bucks are a six and a half point favorite with a total of uh, 51 and a half. Tom Brady and, and his boys are coming off a bye here. Uh, you know, Minnesota is kind of still on the hunt. What are you seeing in this game? 
I like the Bucks to get back on track for this game. I like the Bucks. I'm not sure I'm confident enough to take the spread on this one, but I do like Bucks money line. Um, at the end of the day, yes, the Bucks haven't been super consistent, but Tom Brady is still Tom Brady, um, and so I do like them to get on track after the bye week. So I think I'm going to take the money line for this one and the under. I like under 51 and a half for this game, which I don't know why I'm even doing that because every time I bet over under, it just does not go how I. So you would think at this point I would give up on it, right? Um, but I just keep trucking along, hoping for a better outcome. So I like the under here, and I also like Bucks money line, but I don't I don't feel confident enough to take the spread on this one yeah, we've been talking a lot about totals uh for the season because like the, the the numbers have been pretty outrageous they've been coming down a bit recently but i guess my general philosophy is that i value my like heart health and therefore <laughs> like refuse to bet unders because it makes me so tense and i just like like <laughs> it could be the best value on the board but like i don't think my heart can take it at a certain point and like I think that that's the, maybe that's, oh, maybe that's bad betting, but I just like, from a mental health perspective, I can't do it anymore. Well, it's very <laughs> true because when you bet the over, you, you kind of still tell yourself there's still time. Right. There's still time. Like right. second half. Oh, we've got it. But when it's, when you're betting the under and like the first quarter, you've already, it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I, I don't know why I'm <laughs> betting the spread. I'm taking the risk, hoping that things go a little bit yeah. better. I bet the, oh, I bet the, under in the Browns Titans game, which uh, if you watched, you understand that was probably the worst bet I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. um, but I just can't, I really can't trust the Browns sometimes. So I yeah. thought it would be a low scoring game. I honestly thought that was a lock. I even tweeted about it. This is my lock of the week. And of course it just did not I mean, go as it was two run-heavy teams. I think the thought process makes sense there. And uh, I bet the Chargers over 24 points in the team total last week. So we don't need to talk about bad bets. You're off the hook here. I've got you covered for bad bets. So you're, <laughs> yes. you're totally fine there. Good. Uh, let's talk about Sunday Night Football. The Steelers at the Bills. The Bills, two and a half point favorites here. The total is now up to 48 points. It's gone up a point and a half here in the past hour or so. And the Steelers... Looked pretty bad Monday against Washington and finally took their first loss. That helped swing the spread here three and a half points from what it was on the look ahead line. So do you think that creates like a buy low spot here for the Steelers or is that pessimism now warranted in this game? So one thing that I have learned um, that kind of works for me is grabbing value when you can because um, the line does move. And that's something when you're new to betting, you don't really you see a number and you go with it, but it does move quite a bit. And I do see the public betting very heavily on the bills in this matchup. Um, so I'm kind of leaning towards fading the public and going with the Steelers because I feel like the line will start moving in their favor as we get closer to Sunday. I could be totally wrong, um, but I do see that the public, the public is going to bet heavy on the bills based on the Steelers performance on Monday. Um, so I could see the line moving to favor the Steelers. So I kind of like fading the public on this one and take, the Steelers to cover. Um, that's that's my gut right now. I'm not sure if it's a good one, but that's how I'm feeling about it. Yeah, I do feel like that's the way the market's going to go. Um, not just because my my numbers have these at, at a push, but I do feel like it's going to come back a little bit of uh, uh, excitement about the Bills. Um, but I mean, Josh Allen's been great this year, so I, I think there is reason uh, for the other side as well. Um, all right, so last game, let's go to Monday night. We got Baltimore at Cleveland. Uh, Ravens are, looks like, now one-and-a-half-point favorite with a total of 46-and-a-half. Uh, Baltimore destroyed Cleveland the first game of the season, but Baltimore's had their issues <clears throat> since then. Uh, they, do look like they do look like they're getting healthy. Uh, Mark Andrews, the tight end, and uh, Clayus Campbell, the defensive lineman, are, are off the, the injured list. So uh, any thoughts on this game? Yeah, I like Ravens minus one and a half. I will give credit where it's due. Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns, their offense has made significant improvements. I will give credit there. They have looked a lot better than they did, especially since the first time they played the Ravens. However, um, I think up against Ravens defense, that offense is going to get shut down. Um, Ravens secondary shut them down once and they'll do it again. In my opinion, I think minus one and a half is a little bit low. Um, so I, I I was expecting the spread to be way different. So I like minus one and a half here. Again, credit where it's due. The Browns have looked awesome in comparison to how they started their season. But I think up against Ravens defense, um, they're not going to stand a chance in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big Baker Mayfield believer in general, but like even with that perspective in mind, it's really hard to get to one and a half here given 
that defense, like Ed said, getting healthier, Calais Campbell being back, Lamar Jackson finally looking, you know, a little bit like his old self on Tuesday. It's weird to say Tuesday, uh, but against so- the Cowboys, like it, it does seem like they've turned a corner. And the thing to remember about the Ravens is that they had a pretty brutal stretch of schedule earlier this year, and then they had the COVID hit. So like, I think it makes sense now if you're going to, if you believe in this Ravens offense, which I mean, like they've got the reigning MVP, so why wouldn't you? I feel like if you are a believer in the Ravens, now's the time to buy low. Is that part of your thought process, trying to get in on them after the schedule really just kind of worked against them for a bit? Yes, for sure. And like I said, I this could be a game where we see the spread move a little bit. Yeah. Um, we it, it, could, it could move a little bit before the game happens. That's why I'm thinking minus one and a half. That's that's a spread that I like, so I'm gonna grab it while I can. Um, All righty, yeah, I really like it. I I agree. I think that's the right way to play things for that uh, pretty fun AFC North game. Any other games standing out to you from a value perspective for Week 14, Olivia, based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, uh, I really like Washington right now. Um, I like them to cover. Uh, here's the deal: they're looking for a playoff spot. Uh, they are coming off of a huge win against the Steelers, a uh, little bit, mo- little bit of momentum there. And the 49ers are also playing on a shorter week, having played on Monday night. Um, yeah, I like Washington defense. I really do. I just, they've been looking so great and I love betting. I don't like betting against them. I like betting yeah. on them. Um, and I, in my personal opinion, I think Chase Young shuts down Nick Mullins. That's my prediction. And I like Washington to cover for this one. Yeah, Washington, three and a half. Uh, they're the spread over at FanDuel Sportsbook, minus 118 mm-hmm. on that one. And I think it makes sense. If you like Washington to win this game, it makes sense to go into that NFC East market, bet them at plus 160. So hopefully a good couple of values there for the Washington football team and Moran Rivera for this week. That is Olivia Moody. Make sure you follow her on Twitter, at Liv Moods, and check out all of her stuff over on Book It. Olivia, we really appreciate the time. Good luck to you in week 14, and hopefully we'll talk to you again here soon. Thank you. Covering the future. One final big thank you to Olivia Moody for swinging by and breaking down week number 14. Again, follow her on Twitter at Live Moods and check her out on the Book It app where she is the director of media and an in app host for them as well. And Ed, uh, one thing you wanted to note here was on that 49ers and Washington game under pretty unique circumstances here. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're playing in Arizona again, right? So, um, you know, that docked San Francisco a little bit. Only a point this year because that's what I'm using as home field. But I consider a neutral site um, maybe less so this week just because San Francisco has probably stayed in Glendale. Yeah, they did, yeah. Over the course of the week. So maybe not as much this week. But I I still have it marked as a neutral site um, when I do my predictions. And, uh, yeah, just something to consider. I mean, just a little bit more of an edge for, for Washington. Could have been consideration last week in that Bills game. We saw the Bills play really well there. Maybe we see a similar thing this week with Washington. So a lot of Washington football team love here in week 14. Gotta (laughs) love that. Let's move now into covering the future for week number 14. Ed, you want to talk about one of those big divisional games, one that Olivia liked, was the Baltimore side. And it sounds like you were on the same thing here for your covering the future. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely definitely like uh, the Baltimore side in this. Um, you know, Baltimore is not really the same team they were last year. Uh, the offense, I mean, just just really isn't the same, uh, either running or throwing the ball. Uh, let's just focus on the throwing. Um, you know, last year they were seventh when you look at my adjusted success rate on pass plays, uh, 29th this season. And um, so they have really struggled there. But it's still like it was still a pretty powerful running attack. Um, and, and clearly the Baltimore and the defense is pretty good for Baltimore. So that's a unit that ranks 11th. When I look at my adjusted success rate, um, they're going to get Clayus Campbell back on the defensive line. Uh, looks like March Andrews is going to be back for the offense, uh, big time target for Lamar Jackson. So, you know, Baltimore is looking pretty healthy given their COVID concerns from, from just, uh, I guess two weeks ago, uh, was when it really bit them. Now let's talk about Cleveland. I just think this is a team that's really not in the same class as Baltimore. So you look at their record and they're nine and three. And just like, I think Pittsburgh was the most overrated 11 and 0 team uh, last <laughs> week. I think Cleveland is the most overrated nine and three team. Uh, you can look at their record in one score games. They're six and zero, So that's an unsustainable uh, win rate in those games. And that's going to regress to, to 500. And then uh, let's look at the underlying metrics as well. You know, uh, the Browns are only 19th when you look at, my adjusted success rate on offense, not not what you would really think of in, in terms of what they uh, uh, did last week against Tennessee. Um, and the defense is actually last 
when you look at adjusted success rate. So that's actually worse than the awful Tennessee defense that Cleveland uh, beat up on last week. And uh, Denzel Ward, their cornerback, one of their best players, one of their best two players on that side, he's been out the last two games, is also questionable. So, you know, you know, when thinking about this game, like, um, my model makes Baltimore almost a five-point favorite. So, so why is this, uh, you know, why is this uh, spread so low? You know, you kind of think about Cleveland and just, you know, being up 38-7 to seven at half against Tennessee. Is that playing in people's minds? I don't really understand it. Um, you know, I got this at Baltimore minus one. It's at one and a half. I don't think it'll get to three, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if it moved a little bit more. Yeah, it's it's a two and a half some places now too. So I think that um, it probably will move for sure. Um, and like looking at Cleveland's schedule, Tennessee, the offense is good. Like you said, the defense though is hideous. Before that, they faced the Jaguars, uh, two point win there. Five-point win against the Eagles, who have since, been, since benched their quarterback. Three-point right. win over the Texans. That game was a bit more impressive because it was in pretty right. bad weather, and Nick Chubb had that long run where yep. he went out of bounds. So that was yep. a more could've, impressive could've win. Could have scored. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Raiders game, they lost by 10. Bad weather there as well. They beat the Bengals by three when Joe Burrow was healthy. So not, you know, not terrible. But that's those are the games they played since they lost 38-7 to to Pittsburgh. Right. And we know that Pittsburgh obviously is not like the best team. And I think that the situation where the offense gets out of sync is when they're facing defense that can put them off schedule because the, this, this yeah. offense revolves so heavily around play action, putting Baker Mayfield in good situations. It's harder to do that when you have Clayus Campbell and, you know, Yannick Ngakwe was not there when they, when these teams first played back in week number one, right. it's a tough situation. I still respect this Baltimore defense a lot. I respect the Baltimore offense enough where I think that, if you're going to go with this game, even at two and a half, I think that's still enough value to go with Baltimore. Like if you have two and a half right now, I think that's fine as well. I think that it's a good time, like we said at Olivia, to get in on this Baltimore offense, given the circumstances they face, but also conversely, the circumstances Cleveland has faced too. Yeah, for sure. All right. So my covering the future for this week is a scary one because we're riding Kirk Cousins against a good pass rush, but I'm going to do exactly that here. I want the Vikings plus six and a half against Tampa Bay. And this is not an anti-Tampa Bay thing. I know that's kind of in vogue given they've had these weird blips. It's more about actually believing in the Vikings, which potentially makes it scarier. But specifically, the defense has gotten a lot better recently. With some recent gains, they're actually up to 15th in schedule-adjusted pass defense based on number fires metrics. They've played some backup quarterbacks recently, which will influence things there. But when they face legit quarterbacks even— Things have been less embarrassing there of late. So I think the defense getting better. Still not good. It's not a good defense by any means, but it's not as terrible as it was to open the year. I also think this offense is a bit underrated. They are up to eighth in schedule adjusted passing offense. That's actually one spot ahead of Tampa Bay in this exact same game. So the defense is playing better. The offense should be able to move the ball through the air, even against a tough opponent. That's a good formula to at least get a cover here. The narrative around Kirk Cousins is that he collapses under pressure, and that could be the case, but he's actually played well this year while trying to make up ground. He's at .57 passing net expected points per dropback while trailing by a touchdown or more in the second half. So even if they do fall behind, a backdoor cover is not out of consideration here, not out of the discussion. So if you don't want to deal with the volatility of the Vikings, which I understand when betting a spread, maybe you want to exploit that volatility you can bet the vikings money line at plus 245 i think that's in play as well but i'd rather take the points here it's not about fading tampa bay it's about buying into what i think is an improved vikings team that's throwing the ball pretty well right now so i want to buy the vikings here plus six and a half against tampa bay now ed that's based on what number fires numbers say what do your numbers say about the vikings but also about this game more broadly yeah i mean my numbers like tampa bay about four four and a half so they would definitely agree with with your side. And um, yeah, I mean, Minnesota has had, you know, I mean, I, I think they had a lot. They, they had a young secondary, but then some injuries as well. Yeah. So the fact that they're, you know, even getting to NFL average is probably a good sign for that team. Yeah. And I think it's worthwhile to trust Mike Zimmer. I know that we can poke and prod him for his uh, insistence upon running the football. Like, it's, it's justifiable to, you know, make fun of him for that. Uh, but the defensive mm -hmm. side, he's still a smart coach, knows how to coach things up there. 
the pass rush is really bad. So I think that that's why it's hard for me to bet the, the money line here. But I think that the spread does make sense. And uh, having trust in the Vikings, at least keeping this game close. Uh, so give me a plus six and a half on Minnesota. That is all the time that we have for today here on Covering the Spread. Big thank you to our guests for this week, Edward Egros on the college side and Olivia Moody on the NFL side. Follow Edward Egros at Ed with Sports. Check out his podcast as well on the FanDuel Podcast Network, Odds and Eds, and also check out Olivia on the Book It app, where she is the director of media and on Twitter at Liv Moods. Ed, what is going on for you this week over at the Power Rank? Yeah, so please, if you want to get some more of my predictions and, and analysis, sign up for my free email newsletter. You can get that at thepowerrank.com. And then uh, members of my site get all my analysis uh, earlier in the week when I, when I do it, uh, all the things I talk about on covering the spread and, and covering the future. So if you're interested in that, including, and, and obviously, I mean, you get all my, all my best predictions for college football, NFL, and college basketball as well. Uh, you can check out thepowerrank.net. That'll take you to a place on my site where you can learn more about becoming a member. All right, thepowerrank.net to find that out. Don't forget the YouTube page, thepowerrank.us as well. They get some Drew Martin videos, which uh, can always yep. make us a little bit smarter as yep. well. Uh, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Our DFS podcast, Week 14, went up earlier today with myself and Brandon Gadula, breaking down the Week 14 main slate and talking through all the fun games that are there from a DFS perspective as well. Big thank you to Calvin Theobald, our video producer for running the video side of things here today. Thank you, Cal, as always, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. Good luck with your bets in week 14. We'll talk to you once again next week for some college football championship week. That should be a whole lot of fun. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> <laughs>